Hello, my name is Roy Ramirez. I'm an aerospace engineering student at Purdue University, and I'd like to present you Arex's first liquid propellant rocket engine, the P5 engine. This engine is a proof of concept of amateur propulsion, and its ultimate objective is to contribute to the globalization of space. The engine uses ethanol as fuel and hydrogen peroxide as oxidizer to produce a thrust of approximately 300 newtons of thrust and a chamber pressure of 165 pounds per square inch. To achieve the engine's required operating conditions, a feed system stored here inside the test bench is used. It is thanks to the injection of the propellants that combustion is possible, and thus the propellants are stored under high pressures here inside tanks T2 and T3. The tanks are refilled before testing by using a pump placed in the recharge zone. The feed system uses the carbon dioxide tank in the bottom to push the propellants into the rocket engine. The carbon dioxide pressure is manually adjusted with this regulator and afterwards the carbon dioxide flows through this hose, passes the control room and then pressurizes tanks T2 and T3. The pressure of both tanks can be manually adjusted too. The rest of the components of the system are electronically operated with a computer. To control valves and sensors, a software from Arex called the Rocket Engine Designer is used. As it can be seen in the software, one tab allows to live monitor the sensors. There are four pressure transducers of which two currently read atmospheric pressure. They are found in the propellant lines, one for the oxidizer and the other one for the fuel. The other two are found in the combustion chamber and the engine's exit. There are two flow meters that measure the number of gallons per minute of propellant that go through the system. One is found here in the front and the other one in the back. Like this one here and another one that takes the temperature of the material close to the engine's throat. Finally, there are four load cells that measure the engine's thrust. They are found in the platform that holds the engine. Here, it can be seen that when the injector of the engine is raised by approximately 4 millimeters, the sensors send the thrust reading over to the computer. The software allows to manually operate valves as well as loading operating procedures that can be executed automatically. In the following cold flow procedure, the engine simulates a short firing without combustion. All the sensor readings will be registered by the computer. Once the tank pressures are set up, the procedure is loaded and executed. The valves will be opened at the right moment and the propellants will proceed to be injected. Let's observe. After assembling the combustion chamber with the injector, the engine is set and ready to hot fire. <laughs> 